ज्ञानदीप अकेडमी इंडिया टॉप कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिपरेशन Join us online to get most enriching experience from best faculty with excellent notes and specially designed courses. To join the batch, download Nandi Pais Academy app from Google Play Store. For more information, contact nine five double one two eight zero four six five. Constitution confers which of the following rights and privileges to both citizens and foreigners? Hey, pan ek again tricky question hai. Hello, pan toh mala thoda sa logical na hello part karo lagna rakhi. Kutle kutle rights hey pakta citizen sathi hai, ani kutle kutle rights se both citizen sathi hai, ani foreigner sathi hai. Toh sathi aage na ek chota sa chota sa trick hai shortcut hai puna ki shortcut hai udas part karate apne lo pakta ki एक्सक्लूसिवली सिटीजन सा राइट अवेलेबल एक्सक्लूसिवली सिटीजन एक्सक्लूसिवली फॉर सिटीजन आता लक्षा बस ठेल कि पंद्रह एक पंद्रह पंद्रह दोन तीस बस हा शॉर्टकट है सोपा है पंद्रह एक पंद्रह पंद्रह दोन तीस आता कस पंद्रह एक पंद्रह पंद्रह दोन तीस दैट्स इट पंद्रह आधी एक एक तीस ऐसी आधी चाहिए बस हा एक लॉजिक पंद्रह एक पंद्रह पंद्रह दोन तीस हेच इकड़ तीस ऐसी आतला एक मध्य जो एक नंबर नीचे फेमस राइट टू स्पीच हे पांच राइट जे अंडर आर्टिकल फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी नाइन थर्टी दीज राइट्स आर एक्सक्लूसिवली अवेलेबल फॉर सीटिजन एवड पाठवा लॉजिक लगी विचार जे क्या विचार के विचार सीटिजन सावेलेबल है फॉरनर सा अवेलेबल है सीटिजन फॉरनर सा अवेलेबल है सग सॉल्व हो सकते एवं शॉर्टकट पंद्रह एक पंद्रह पंद्रह दोन तीस ओके नेक्स्ट सो वर्कआउट दिस यू कैन गेट द आंसर वेरी सीम्पल हा खूब फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन है विथ रेफर टू दाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया कन्सिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट वाइस प्रेसिडेंट कैन बी रिमूव फ्रॉम इज ऑफिस बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ इम्पीचमेंट नो देर इज नो एनी फॉर्मल प्रोसेस ऑफ इम्पीचमेंट एक्सेप्ट प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया दैट्स वाई दिस फर्स्ट ऑप्शन बिकम्स रॉन्ग एंड इफ यू गो बाय दिस एलिमिनेशन टेक्निक वन 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 दिस इज रॉन्ग सो आंसर इज टू एंड थ्री स्टील विल गो टू टू एंड थ्री रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ रिमूवल मज बी पास बाय इफेक्टिव मेजोरिटी बाय राज्यसभा That is the fifty uh, percent of total membership, and agreed by Lok Sabha. Agreed is arth hoto ki uh, simple majority. So he pun factually correct hai. Simple majority. The Constitution has not mentioned any ground for the removal of Vice President. Yes, surprising, but still factually correct. That's why they have asked correct answer. So two and three. So say apna pahle the alta elimination. Okay. Next. The office of the leader of house is what provided under leader of house. तुम अलग में आती कि constitution provides for the various uh, uh, offices uh, for the parliament. That's like leader of house. कि leader of house एक ऐसी एक position है, एक ऐसी एक जागा है कि which is actually uh, leadership in the house. हा एक्चुअली प्राइम मिनिस्टर आतो इफ दट प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज मेम्बर ऑफ लोकसभा देन ही इज लीडर ऑफ लोकसभा इफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज नॉट द मेम्बर ऑफ लोकसभा एंड इफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज द मेम्बर ऑफ राज्यसभा जस की मिस्टर मनमोहन सिंग तर ही कैन ही विल बी दी विल बी द लीडर ऑफ हाउस ऑफ राज्यसभा मग तेस लोकसभा लीडर ऑफ हाउस को विच विल बी अपॉइंटेड बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ओके लीडर ऑफ हाउस का सगत इम्पॉर्टंट रोल आतो कि टू इन्फ्लुएंस द एक्चुअल बिजनेस गोइंग ऑन इन दैट पार्लियामेंट और द हाउस दैट पर्टिकुलर हाउस ऑफ विच ही इज अ लीडर वेरी इंपॉर्टंट रोल ही हैज इन द डे टू डे वर्किंग ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट दैट हाउस पर्टिकुलर हाउस एंड डे टू डे बिजनेस ऑफ दैट हाउस ओके सो लेट्स सी की वॉट दे आर आस्किंग सो इट इज अ पार्लियामेंटरी स्टैचू देन द रूल्स प्रोसिजर्स एंड कंडक्ट ऑफ बिजनेस and constitution of india of course constitution ta nahi hai but it is provided under the rules procedures and conduct of business okay now which of the following states were formerly union territories ata ha thoda sa 
माहित असलेलाच क्वेश्चन आहे ह्यामध्ये थोडं ट्रिक वगैरे अजून तर नाही पण माहित पाहिजे की याची हिस्ट्री काय आणि ह्याची हिस्ट्री इट गोज बॅक टू युअर फजल अली कमिशन वेअर फजल अली कमिशन तुम्हाला माहिती आहे की त्याच्या आधीची बॅकग्राऊंड की फजल अली कमिशनचं बॅकग्राऊंड असं होतं की द स्टेट रिओर्गनायझेशन त्या वेळेस डिबेट सुरू होतात की कॅन बी रिओर्गनाइज अवर स्टेट्स ऑन दी बेसिस ऑफ लँग्वेज आणि दोन आधीचे कमिशन म्हणजे युअर धार कमिशन अँड युअर जे व्ही पी कमिशन वेअर ऍक्च्युली हॅड रिजेक्टेड दॅट आयडिया ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक रिओर्गनायझेशन आणि त्याचा परिणाम असं झालं की आंध्र प्रदेशमध्ये खूप मोठं आंदोलन छेडलं गेलं आणि ते दॅट बिकम व्हायलंट आणि एका एका लेवल नंतर असं झालं की तिथले एक इम्पॉर्टंट लिडर त्यांचा मृत्यू झाला डॉक्टर दॅट श्रीरम पटू राईट त्यांचा मृत्यू झाल्यामुळे काय झालं की ते व्हायलन्स आणखी वाढला आणि गव्हर्नमेंट वॉज कम्पेअर टू डू समथिंग इन दॅट सीन आणि त्यांनी मग फजल अली कमिशन ला बसवलं अँड देन फजल अली कमिशन ऍक्सेप्टेड दॅट आयडिया ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक रिओर्गनायझेशन ऑफ स्टेट बट रिजेक्टेड द आयडिया ऑफ वन स्टेट वन हे तुम्हाला सगळी स्टोरी माहिती आहे तेव्हा म्हणजे बिफोर फजल अली कमिशन आणि फजल अली कमिशन रिकमेंडेड फॉर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सिक्सटीन स्टेट्स नो फोर्टीन स्टेट्स अँड थ्री युनियन टेरिटरीज आणि जे गव्हर्नमेंटने ऍक्सेप्ट केलं इन द सेन्स ऑफ फोर्टीन स्टेट्स प्लस सिक्स युनियन टेरिटरीज पण ते गव्हर्नमेंटने ऍक्सेप्ट केलं विथ सर्टन मॉडिफिकेशन फजल अली कमिशनचे रिकमेंडेशन ह्याचा अर्थ काय झाला मग ह्याच्या आधी जी म्हणजे फजल अली कमिशनच्या आधी जेव्हा स्टेट्स आपले ऑर्गनाइज होते है ना त्यांची कॅटेगरी वेगळी होती ए कॅटेगरी ए कॅटेगरी बी कॅटेगरी सी कॅटेगरी डी त्याच्यामध्ये कुठल्या कुठल्या प्रकारचे स्टेट असावेत ह्याची एक वेगळी लिस्ट आहे तर यू कॅन रेफर दॅट टेक्स्ट सांगायचं असं की इट वॉज ओनली इन दी नाईन्टीन फिफ्टी सिक्स विथ द हेल्प ऑफ स्टेट रिओर्गनायझेशन ऍक्ट अँड द सेव्हन कॉन्स्टिट्युशनल अमेंडमेंट ऍक्ट वेअर वी ऍक्च्युली कॅटेगराईज द स्टेट नाव दे आर लाईक इन प्रेझेंट स्टेट राईट we accepted the fazal ali commission's recommendations where we uh, uh, accepted the formation of uh, 14 states and six union territories that the union territory hi hai okay so this these union territories were earlier uh, sorry these states were earlier union territories and subsequently they became a state in the frequent and uh, the henceforth reorganization again and again over the period of time that the answer if actually mahit paise ki kutle kutle hai tar hyat kai नॉलेज नाही असं काही पण सिम्पल मेघालय वॉज नॉट युनियन टेरिटरी बट दिस थ्री वेअर युनियन टेरिटरीज अर्लियर राईट नाव नेक्स्ट इज अबाउट जब दी फॉलोविंग सर्कमस्टान्सेस मे लेट टू द रिझिग्नेशन ऑफ द काउन्सिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स काउन्सिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स सॉरी रेजिग्नेशन राईट सो पासेज ऑफ नो कॉन्फिडन्स मोशन येस आर्टिकल सेव्हन्टी फायव ची प्रोव्हिजन आहे so it leads to resignation censure motion censure actually kya hai what is censure motion censure motion manje kya hai ki any member of their parliament or that house can uh, uh, censure the any action policy or uh, decision taken by a particular minister or a group of ministers or a council of ministers as whole okay simple ekada policy cha against tana censure karna hai but it does not lead to resignation itself okay so ha option barobar nahi hai money bill gets defeated in lok sabha if money bill gets yes so money bill is important bill so that's why if get if it gets defeated it leads to the resignation of the government of that day that's why your answer becomes 1 and 3 okay okay so we were at question number 31 we'll see what is that consider the following statements regarding national emergency and uh, one small uh, correction spelling mistake is here article 356 it is article 356 so uh, let's see president by the further order can specify other fundamental rights that won't be operative except article 19 and 21 is the first option and you know that under article 359 and 358 these provisions both the provisions provides for the exception of these fundamental rights where it is not 19 actually it is 20 and 21 okay it is 20 and 21 that's why this is factually wrong it should be 20 and 21 parliament can't make laws <coughs> sorry parliament can make laws on any subject mentioned in the state list so this topic is about the effect of national emergency on various areas areas including your uh, executive areas including center state relation 
central state relation in terms of executive legislative financial relations then uh, effect of national emergency on fundamental rights hmm? so you should be very clear about those effects okay that technically could be important hai. factually the abadal might by ki what is effect on state legislature what is effect on life of lok sabha what is effect on fundamental rights what is effect on article 20 21 what is 358 what is 359 you should be very clear about that right so ha national emergency ha just the less revise karna the topic hai okay जैसे कि फंडामेंटल राइट डीपीएसपी एंड ड्यूटीज बी रिवाइज इट सेवरल टाइम्स जैसे नेशनल इमरजेंसी शुड बी योर प्रायोरिटी फॉर रिविजन्स नंबर ऑफ रिविजन्स राइट पार्लियामेंट कैन मेक लॉज ऑन एनी सब्जेक्ट यस दिस इज फैक्चुअली राइट इफ यू कैन रिकॉल राइट स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर इज सस्पेंडेड ओके विचार लेकर आए कि वॉट इज इन करेक्ट बाय द वे दिस वॉज इन करेक्ट एंड स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर इज नॉट सस्पेंडेड इट 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 फंक्शन इट कैन मेक लॉज जस्ट कि पार्लियामेंट के लॉज सुपरसिड करते सो इट इज नॉट सस्पेंडेड पार्लियामेंट कैन लॉज ऑन एनी सब्जेक्ट इन मेन्शन इज द स्टेट लिस्ट दिस इज फैक्चुअल राइट दैट्स वाई योर आंसर बिकम्स वन एंड थ्री फक्त वी विल नॉट लिमिट आर सेल्फ टू दिस क्वेश्चन वी विल ओपन अप अदर एरियाज टू प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम दिस क्वेश्चन जस कि आप आता बोल लो कि अदर एरियाज इन सेंस कि वॉट आज वॉट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ नैशनल इमर्जेंसी ऑन वेरियस एरियाज जस कि तो फंडामेंटल राइट लेजिस्लेचर एक्सिक्यूटिव फाइनेंसेस फाइनेंशियल पॉवर्स फाइनेंशियल रिलेशन ऑफ सेंटर एंड स्टेट हे सग तुम्हारा पाठ पाजे हा क्वेश्चन का मीनिंग तो है कि यू शुड बी वेरी थोरो अबाउट द टॉपिक ऑफ नैशनल इमर्जेंसी कम्प्लीटली ओके नेक्स्ट कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट बिल्स all the constitutional amendment bills so by the way okay uh, before reading that we will uh, deal with uh, what is constitutional amendment and under what article yeah you know that article 368 deals with the constitutional amendment in the part 20 of the constitution where is there is a very uh, there is a separate procedure for passage of the constitutional amendment bill as per the procedures of the parliament right now uh, uh, constitutional amendment bill actually a special type of bill um, uh, than ordinary bill Uh, so it requires a special attention special procedures uh, the the for example uh, president must give an assent or uh, it it is passed by the uh, separate uh, separately it is passed separately in the both houses that too with the special majority or you can say the constitutional amendment bill is not introduced in the state legislature you know i say that is speciality there so and if uh, the constitutional amendment bill regards with the federal structure uh, of the uh, constitution of india then the consent of the half of the state is, is must for the passage of the constitutional amendment bill i say kaita badal factual it is that you should be clear about that uh, while reading the parliament chapter in your textbook okay so the first option is all the constitutional amendment bills are initiated in the parliament and state legislature okay so provision is that a constitutional amendment bill can be uh, introduced in either house of the parliament that can be uh, lok sabha or that can be rajya sabha but constitutional amendment bills are not introduced in the state legislatures second in case of the disagreement between the two houses there is provision for holding a joint sitting of the two houses extremely wrong statement okay there is no such provision because the constitution itself clarifies that this con uh, constitutional amendment bill must be passed separately in the two houses separately there is no provision for joint sitting in the constitutional for the constitutional amendment bills right third president has no power to send the constitutional amendment bill back has no power for reconsideration of the parliament there is no question of consideration or reconsideration because constitution itself provides for that pro uh, constitution in sense of the 24th constitutional amendment act okay so i will just mention that fact uh, 24th constitutional amendment act provides that the president must give an assent must must give an assent in case of the constitutional amendment bill okay he has no veto power regarding this constitutional amendment bills that's why our answer will become like uh, they are asking they are they are asking like oh, what is correct right so let's see upon kya kya kele all constitutional amendment bills are considered in parliament no uh, legislature states ka sambandh in case of disagreement between joint sittings uh, there is no question about that and uh, 
uh, yeah and president has no power to send uh, the constitutional amendment back to yes he must give an assent that's why the option b becomes your answer three only consider the following statements in the next question 33 it is about uh, losing of citizenship criteria losing of citizenship okay <clears throat> If you can, if you can recall the provisions from Article Five to Article Eleven in the Part Two of the Constitution, which deals with the area of citizenship, you can recall these provisions, which are very factual in process. Okay, actually, just tick mark the problem. Ki, tumal the part hai. That's simple. So, uh, citizenship upon lose kashi karto. Okay, so bago upon option kya kya? Acquisition, acquiring the citizenship of this some other country, then your citizenship get lost. Okay. So, yes, ordinary resident out of India for seven years continuously, yes, you lose your citizenship. Acquiring citizenship of India by means of fraud, yes, in this case also you can lose your citizenship. Then, re renouncing the Indian citizenship by your own choice, yes, you lose your citizenship. That's why one, two, three and four become your... Um, and beyond that, Tumala uh, additionally prepare that what are the criteria to get the Indian citizenship? What are the criteria to uh, on which we lose the Indian citizenship? So you should not only depend on or you should not limit your study for this question only for losing. The, and additionally, you should study about how to acquire the citizenship of India. Okay, just prepare that. Next is with reference to public accounts committee, consider the following statements. Public accounts committee. It was uh, and uh, yeah, so you know this topic comes from the parliamentary committees. Hmm? Uh, so what is parliamentary committee by the way? Parliament, you know, ki ek session session madhe mitta tha ni constitution mandates uh, the parliament to uh, meet at least for two years in a year without breakage like uh, uh, without extending it beyond six months. Manje the three session mandat. So parliament meets generally for the three times in a year. That is in the budget session, your monsoon session and winter session. Okay. Mag itar vare parliament se kam suru nasta ka. Asta. Okay, parliament come continuously through Asta. These through this parliamentary committees. That the stand standing parliamentary committee Asta G continuously work Kartaste. Current parliaments, the rose Sagra members name Basna Piksha. We can form groups and it is a come through right, right? right? We, uh, the, a group of um, MPs can work on um, uh, some other area, uh, uh, another group can work on some other areas and all. So that's how we divide our division of the labor and this principle of division of labor works in the parliament even uh, through this parliamentary committees. Uh, which are like uh, a parliamentary committee, an like, important committee uh, that is called as a public accounts committee. Public accounts committee has uh, got important function uh, to scrutinize and uh, to verify the three reports submitted by CAG to the, par to the parliament or to the president even. The CAG submits its report to president and subsequently president to the parliament. So ultimately it is parliament. The three reports like uh, appropriation bill, finance bill and public account, uh, public undertakings um, uh, that record is scrutinized by the public accounts committee. Additionally, public accounts committee uh, scrutinizes the government expenditure from the sense of economy, prudence, wisdom, in which area the expenditure can be minimized, in which area it can be economically justifiable and all. These areas are dealt with by this public accounts committee and this public accounts committee was established in 1921 with the recommendation or on the basis of the government of India Act of 1919 and it has uh, 22 members of 15 from Lok Sabha and 7 from Rajya Sabha where the chairman is appointed by the speaker and as a convention the chairman has been uh, from the opposition party that is the basic understanding of the public accounts committee starting from the role of public accounts committee well, on this on the basis of this knowledge we will just uh, tick mark our answer and we'll get to the answer correct answer okay let's see <clears throat> It was set up in the it was set up in 1950 on the recommendation of Krishna Menon. No, it was set up in 1921 on the recommendation or on the basis of the Government of India Act 1919. It has equal members, number of members. That's why first become wrong. It has an equal number of members from both the houses. No, it is uh, 15 plus 7. Then chairman is appointed from amongst the members by the speaker. Okay, so this is fine. 
एंड एडिशनली एक इन्फॉर्मेशन अपने क्या है कि कन्वेन्शन अस है कि द चेयरमैन विल बी फ्रॉम द अपोजिशन पार्टी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर इन करेक्ट सो वन एंड टू बिकम युअर आंसर ओके गुड नेक्स्ट With reference to the public accounts committee, yeah, we are done with uh, statement of non-aligned movement. What is non-aligned movement? Non-aligned movement was actually an uh, a movement by a third block of the countries as an opposition, as in prince opposition in the principle of the uh, Cold War era politics going on that time in the 1950s, 60s, and all, where the world countries, all the global nations. were divided into two separate blocks uh, one was aligned with usa and one was aligned with russia okay and nato and warsaw pact represented those two alignments where the option was either you join this group or you are enemy of me asa to group hota then a uh, few leaders including uh, the india uh, with uh, leadership of uh, mr jawaharlal nehru uh, and other countries like indonesia uh, etc etc Uh, your egypt and all yeah countries they mean they opened up a third block that is non alignment block as in as as a group which is not aligned to which is not tilted towards any of these two groups earlier groups okay so this movement actually gone um, got very much success in the sense ki it um, it was representative it was um, uh, ethical it was representing global south it was representing the actual issues rather than just you know, tug of war and all right so the question is about that national movement and and uh, even today this institution is functioning with uh, around i think 118 countries today uh, around 118 countries uh, which are member of the uh, nam and it is the second largest uh, the union of the countries after united nation itself okay so you can imagine ki how uh, important institution this is where india has an important role to play right the belgrade conference marked the zenith of india's engagement with the newly independent asian and african uh, nations its first summit was held in bangdong and third was uh, third option is about co-founder or co-founder india as a co-founder uh, factually to me there as a best class prelims la nam as an institution tumhala he tar okay so india is an uh, is both a co-founder of nam that is fine pan tumhala he lakshat yel ki ya option madhe just do now change kel एक्सचेंज के रादर ओके इफ यू रीड लाइक दिस द बांगडोंग कॉन्फरेंस ऑफ नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फाइव द फर्स्ट राइट द बांगडोंग कॉन्फरेंस वेर दे मेट एंड दे शेयर देर आइडियाज की अपन वी कैन फॉर्म द इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइक दिस दैट वॉज बांगडोंग कॉन्फरेंस द बांगडोंग कॉन्फरेंस मार्क द जेनिथ ऑफ इंडिया एंगेजमेंट विद न्यूली इंडिपेंडेंट एशियन एंड एफ्रिकन कंट्रीज लाइक घान एंड ऑल एंड सेकेंड इफ यू रीड लाइक दिस द फर्स्ट समिट वॉज हेल्ड इन बेलग्रेड in september 1961 then these two option will be correct otherwise just because of the exchange of the words of the cities names it became wrong right that's why um, uh, what they have asked the correct option so this is three only okay these two are wrong options just just exchange this okay now 36 with reference to the constitution of india the following uh, advocate the social democracy and economic democracy Uh, if you just read the constitutional text uh, by definition fundamental rights in our constitution uh, uh, is about political rights it is it tries to establish the political democracy and on the other hand there is one provision in the part 4 uh, where we have directive principles of state policy the this directive principles of state policy are the uh, tools to establish social and economic democracy okay what is dpsp directive principle of state policy they are actually constitutional directions to the government of india they are constitutional reminders constitutional obligations to the government of the union and the state ki while making policies and laws you should remind you should keep in mind these 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 directives principles while making these laws and policies which are listed uh, from article 36 to your 51 okay 
Uh, so uh, they are the novel feature according to um, uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and that's how this question comes like uh, uh, which represent social democracy also and uh, uh, economic democracy also. Additionally, there is one uh, important ingredient of our Indian constitution called as preamble where it can be justified as it represents the socio-economic uh, democracy because of its broader vision of justice, welfare and uh, what benefit to the poor, right? So let's see uh, what options we can choose. So that is sure that we are going to have three in our answer and not fundamental right because it represents political rights. We are not sure about preamble now currently while we are solving the paper. So let's see can we eliminate something. So DPSP must type and two no koi. So it goes like this and now our confusion is clear one must be there and three is there so preamble ta hai and preamble madle word tumhi jar bagal to justice equality fraternity and then so hesa sagla broader meaning tujhe post ke socio economic democracy you know they are subjective in nature and can be correlated with each other okay next question with reference to the uh, uh, what which of the following is or are devices used by the parliament to ensure the executive accountability okay you know our indian parliamentary system is a responsible government is a responsible parliamentary system what is mean by responsible in that sense being responsible means being answerable and accountable to the representatives or in sense people through their representatives Article 75.3 of our Indian constitution deals with the responsibility principle, accountability principle of the parliament. Okay, in the parliament where the executive wing is held responsible to the legislature, particularly Lok Sabha. Okay, that article 75.3 where the executive wing, the bureaucracy is responsible for their every action, every policy, every act to Lok Sabha or parliament or legislature. Got my point? Now, <clears throat> what they've asked, which are other tools, tools of this uh, ensuring the accountability and responsibility of the government to the legislature wing. Select the correct answer using the code below. So let's see uh, option deliberation and discussion. Yes, parliament through deliberations and discussions um, uh, uh, ensure the accountability and responsibility uh, of the government uh, or the executive wing towards legislature. Secondly, approval or refusal of laws. Parliament can refuse the laws. Manjakai ki responsible and accountable pakarta executive. Then financial control through various committees or approving the demand for grants, approval of the budgets, public account committees, etc. And then no confidence motion again through article 75 where an uh, no confidence motion if passed it can lead to the resignation of the whole council of ministers okay and it can form a new government in itself that's how yes we can say all these four options are correct in that regard where the executive accountability is concerned okay i hope it's okay 38 number Consider the following statements with respect of Act of Good Government of India. Just they have written Act of Good Government of India without writing the year. That was the trick. And if you are clear about it, a simple question. The Act of Good Government of India is nothing but the Act of 1858. Um, the, the background behind that act was the revolt of 1857 uh, because of that 1857 revolt Nivin act Purchavar Shanla Gila ki punaha asha prakar sa revolt hoon and it should not pose any uh, threat or any challenge to the very structure of the British crown there for Indian colony. Now they made several changes like um, uh, the um, the company rule was abolished and the crown was established, the rule of crown was established. Um, directly at the government of Britain was ruling the Indian territory in spite of uh, that Indian um, uh, East India Company. The double rule was again um, abolished through that um, act even that uh, key board of control and COD and all key court of directors. Burpur sara changes than the Brunan administration mother. Aki army mother, police power structure mother, ki pude itasapuna problem hoon. Okay. 
the act transferred the powers of east india company to british crown of course yes it established a system of double government by creating the board of control and court of directors जर तुम्ही नीट बघाल तर तिथे दिलाय की इट इस्टॅब्लिश्ड नो इट एंडेड द सिस्टम ऑफ डबल गव्हर्नमेंट बाय क्रिएटिंग ऑर वॉट और ही जे स्टेटमेंट तुम्ही जर एक्झॅक्टली वाचाल तर इट इज द स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम द पीट्स इंडिया ऍक्ट पीट्स इंडिया ऍक्ट ऑफ सेव्हन्टीन एटी फोर जिथे त्यांनी पहिल्यांदा डबल गव्हर्नमेंट इस्टॅब्लिश करण्याचा प्रयत्न केला इन द सेन्स की डबल गव्हर्नमेंट म्हणजे की थ्रू बोर्ड ऑफ कंट्रोल अँड बोर्ड ऑफ डिरेक्टर्स राईट देन इट क्रिएटेड अ न्यू ऑफिस ऑफ सेक्रेटरी ऑफ स्टेट हु वॉज अ मेंबर ऑफ ब्रिटिश कॅबिनेट हु वॉज अ मेंबर ऑफ ब्रिटिश कॅबिनेट ऑफ कोर्स येस ओके अ न्यू ऑफिस वॉज क्रिएटेड थ्रू दिस ऍक्ट आता तुमचं होमवर्क असं आहे की यू हॅव टू रेफर दॅट एटीन फिफ्टी एट ऍक्ट अँड अदर प्रोव्हिजन्स अदर इम्पॉर्टंट प्रोव्हिजन्स की ज्यांना एटीन फिफ्टी एट ने ऍक्टने असे काय काही इम्पॉर्टंट चेंजेस घडवले जसं आपण बोललोच की क्राऊन एस्टॅब्लिश झालाय देन पॅरामाउंटसी रिकॉग्नाइज केली गेली ऑन दी प्रिन्स ली स्टेट अँड ऑल सो तुम्हाला हे फक्त बघायचं की अजून काय काय चेंजेस एटीन फिफ्टी एटने केले सो इन दॅट रिगार्ड आपल्याकडे आन्सर काय बनतं दे आर ट्रान्सफर द पॉवर ऑफ दिस्ट इंडिया तो पहिलं स्टेटमेंट बरोबर आहे थर्ड इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट दॅट वाय वन अँड थ्री विल बी आन्सर दॅट इज बी ना कन्सिडर द फॉलोइंग प्रोव्हिजन ऑफ द स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी इन द पार्लमेंट सो इंडियामध्ये जी इंडियन पार्लमेंटरी फंक्शन आहे पार्लमेंटचा इम्पॉर्टंट रोल आहे टू पास द लॉज टू अमेंड द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन टू डिस्कस अँड डेलिबरेट अँड फॉर ऑल दीज रोल्स पार्लमेंट रिक्वायर द वोटिंग पार्लमेंट रिक्वायर सर्टन कन्सेंट ऑफ सर्टन नंबर पर्टिक्युलर नंबर इंडियन पार्लमेंटरी फंक्शनिंग इज ऍक्च्युली बेस्ट ऑन टू थ्री व्हेरियस मेजॉरिटी टाइप्स दॅट इज कॉल्ड अ सिम्पल मेजॉरिटी स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी इफेक्टिव्ह मेजॉरिटी अँड ऑल स्पेशल मेजॉरिटीचा मिनिंग आहे की इन सर्टन मॅटर्स इट रिक्वायर्स कन्सेंट ऑफ मॅक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ दी मेंबर ऑफ पार्लमेंट वेल सिंपल मेजॉरिटी इज अबाउट फ्लेक्झिबिलिटी की जिथे खूप कमी नंबर म्हणजे फिफ्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ दी प्रेझेंट अँड वोटिंग पण चालतं सो अबाउट स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी वी विल सी वॉट दे आर आस्ट स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी कन्स्टिट्यूट मेजॉरिटी दॅट इज मोर दॅन फिफ्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ द टोटल मेंबरशिप ऑफ दी हाऊस अँड मेजॉरिटी ऑफ टू थर्ड्स ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ दी प्रेझेंट अँड वोटिंग ऍक्च्युली करेक्ट द एक्सप्रेशन टोटल मेंबरशिप मीन्स द टोटल नंबर ऑफ दी मेंबर्स कंपेर कंप्राइजिंग ऑफ दी हाऊस एक्सक्लुडिंग द वॅकन्सीज येस ओके बघू याच्याबद्दल काय द स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी इज रिक्वायर्ड इन द राज्यसभा फॉर रिमूवल ऑफ व्हाइस प्रेसिडेंट ओके आता आपण असं समजू की वी आर कन्फ्युज इन दी ऑप्शन नंबर टू लेट्स ए दी स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी इज रिक्वायर्ड इन द राज्यसभा फॉर रिमूवल ऑफ व्हाइस प्रेसिडेंट प्रोसिजर तुम्हाला माहिती व्हाइस प्रेसिडेंटची देर इज नो कन्सर्न अबाउट स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी देर इज जस्ट रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ अन इफेक्ट टू मेजॉरिटी दॅट इज दी फिफ्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ द टोटल नंबर ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ द राज्यसभा ॲडिशनली इट शुड बी ऍग्रीड बाय दॅट रिझोल्युशन शुड बी ऍग्रीड बाय दी लोकसभा विथ अ सिम्पल मेजॉरिटी सो दिस बिकम्स अ रॉंग स्टेटमेंट सो तीन थ्री तर कटलं नाव वन इज कन्फर्म नाव तुम्ही अडकलात की वॉट अबाउट टू आता तुम्हाला चॉईस असेल फिफ्टी फिफ्टी पर्सेंट वर तुम्ही तुम्हाला तर करणारच आहे तो वन तर कन्फर्म आहे बट नॉट अबाउट टू वॉट अबाउट टू देन द एक्सप्रेशन रेड इट अगेन द एक्सप्रेशन टोटल मेंबरशिप मीन्स द टोटल नंबर ऑफ मेंबर्स कंप्राइजिंग द हाऊस एक्सक्लुडिंग वॅकन्सीज अँड ऍबसेंटीज मग ह्याचा अर्थ काय राहिला जर तर आपण ऍबसेंटी पकडणार नाही तर मग अर्थ काय तर तुम्हाला लगेच लॉजिक क्लिक झालं पाहिजे की टोटल मेंबरशिप जी सँक्शन स्ट्रेंथ असते सँक्शन स्ट्रेंथ बाय द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन जसं की फाय फिफ्टी टू इन द केस ऑफ लोकसभा दॅट इज सँक्शन स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ दॅट हाऊस दॅट इज टोटल मेंबरशिप एक्सक्लुडिंग ऑफ इट ओके इन्क्लुडिंग युअर या वॅकन्सीज अँड ऍबसेंटीज हे त्याला पकडलो दॅट इज टोटल मेंबरशिप गिव्हन बाय द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन दॅट्स वाय धीस बिकम्स रॉंग अँड वन ओनली फोर्टी कन्सिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट विथ रेफरन्स टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द न्यू स्टेट्स इन इंडिया special majority new states in india the formation of new states it is dealt with by the article 2 uh, and 3 2 uh, deals with the formation of new state completely new state uh, completely new territory and admitting it into the indian union and article 3 deals with the internal reorganization as we have discussed earlier so it's a separate process article 3 regarding 
कशी प्रोसेस आहे आपण ते पण हे ऑप्शन वाचता वाचता पण बघू पण एक सिम्पल सांगायचं असेल तर आपण असं म्हणू शकतो की द इफ इफ द सेंट्रल गव्हर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स टू फॉर्म अ न्यू स्टेट देर इज नो रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द कन्सेंट ऑफ द स्टेट्स और फिफ्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ द स्टेट्स and then there is no requirement of the special majority even uh, even the consent of that particular state from which that change has been uh, is being taken uh, here consent chip and requirement nahi hai fakt ek important requirement hai ki president must refer that uh, bill of the changing of these uh, uh, of the changes to that particular state and uh, within a particular period of time that state must return uh, with their uh, views on that bill जरी ते परत नाही आलं किंवा ते व्ह्यूज प्रेसिडेंटला किंवा एक्झिक्युटिव्ह गव्हर्नमेंटला सेंट्रल गव्हर्नमेंटला नाही पटलं तर दॅट इज अ टोटली फाईन द सेंट्रल गव्हर्नमेंट कॅन प्रोसिड विथ देअर स्टँड लेट्स वेड दिस ऑप्शन नाव स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी विथ रॅटिफिकेशन ऑफ फिफ्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ स्टेट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द न्यू स्टेट नो देर इज नो रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर दॅट बिल फॉर आय अकॉर्डिंग दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऍक्च्युली आर्टिकल थ्री सो तुम्हाला आर्टिकल थ्री क्लिअर असेल तर हा ऑप्शन जमतो हा क्वेश्चन जमतो स्पेशल मेजॉरिटी विथ रॅटिफिकेशन ऑफ दिफ्टी पर्सेंट ऑफ स्टेट नो है ना का तुम्हाला सरप्राइजिंग राईट बट यू मस्ट नो दॅट प्रिन्सिपल वेअर वी हॅव द इंडस्ट्रक्टिबल युनियन ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्टिबल स्टेट्स है ना वेल डिफाइनिंग अवर द फेडरेशन अवर इंडियन फेडरेशन वी डिफाइन इट लाईक दॅट इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल युनियन ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्टिबल स्टेट्स वेअर द टेरिटरियल इंटिग्रिटी ऑफ दि स्टेट्स इज नॉट गॅरंटेड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट कॅन चेंज द टेरिटरी अँड चेंज द बॉर्डर चेंज द नेम्स ऑन इट्स ओन हे थोडस युनिटरी फीचर आहे नॉट फेडरल इन सेन्स थोडं युनिटरी फीचर ओके देन द बिल ऑफ द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द न्यू स्टेट कॅन ओनली बी इंट्रोड्युस्ड इन द लोकसभा ऑर इन द राज्यसभा विथ द प्रायर परमिशन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट ओके अँड द बिल गेट्स लॅप्स्ड ऑटोमॅटिकली विथ द डिनाल ऑफ द कन्सर्निंग स्टेट्स whose boundaries are going to alter to tumhala he tar let's skip this part second third word ki bill gets lapsed denial of the concerning state okay to aplyala maiti ki state cha view ha recognize kela jato hai na but he mandatory nahi hai ki to agree upon that view of the states you got me so this is option becomes wrong this happens in case of united states of india usa sorry united states of america where in usa the consent of the state is very important for the uh, these federal changes in that state because it is a united state this federation is absolute federation in case of usa where apne kade the adopted concept hai apan aplya garjanusar apan federation la change kelele definition la change kelele okay <clears throat> so of course yes, this becomes wrong and two only now 41 Adopt the this. Tencha appointment baddal utarle or ya appointment baddal. Okay. So tumhala ta hea prepare karta na heaven garaj se ki adopt the this ta ahes. But what is the procedure for appointment and removal for the permanent judges of high court, permanent judges of supreme court, retired judges, adopt the this, acting chief justice of India. एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा हे तुम्हाला सगळं ह्याबद्दल पण स्टडी करायचं आहे बट हिअर यू विल स्टडी द ऍडॉप्ट दिस ऍडॉप्ट दिस ची कन्सेप्ट अशी आहे सिम्पल सांगायचं म्हणजे की जेव्हा सुप्रीम कोर्टचा वर्कलोड वाढलेला असतो किंवा त्यांचा कोरम पूर्ण नसतो कोरम इन सेन्स की दॅक्शन स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ दॅजेस ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दे आर तर थर्टी थ्री आहे राईट सो ही जर कमी पडत असेल त्यांना ड्यू टू ऍबसेंटीज अँड वॅकन्सीज तर ते काय करतात की चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया हायकोर्ट ला रिक्वेस्ट करतात की प्लीज तुमच्यातले जर कोणी असतील हायकोर्ट चे जजेस तर त्यांना प्लीज दे इन्व्हाइट सुप्रीम सीजीआय इन्व्हाइट दो जजेस फॉर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट थ्रू देन विथ दी या ह्याच्यामध्ये हायकोर्टच्या चीफ जस्टिसचा सोबत डिस्कशन होतं आणि अशा एखाद्या जजेस की त्यांना ते इन्व्हाइट करतात चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया टू कम अँड शेअर दी वर्कलोड ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया त्यावेळी इट इज द ड्युटी ऑफ दॅट जज ऑफ दी हायकोर्ट टू ऍक्सेप्ट दॅट ऑफर आणि मग त्यांना पूर्ण पॉवर्स अँड ऑल हे सगळं काही सुप्रीम कोर्टच्या जज सारखं मिळतं फक्त ऍडिशनली एक कन्सेप्ट और एक कंडिशन अशी आहे की पहिले तर त्यांना प्रेसिडेंट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडियाला प्रेसिडेंटशी कन्सल्ट करावंच लागतं ऍडिशनली जो जज ऍडॉप जज म्हणून अपॉइंट होणार आहे ही मस्ट बी क्वालिफाईड टू बिकम अ जज ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ओके क्वालिफिकेशन तेवढे पाहिजे 
simple he is appointed by the president when there is a lack of quorum of the permanent so pehla to vakya chukto hai apan not president he is appointed by the chief justice of india with the consent of president with the uh, with the consultation with the president right second he can be appointed after the consultation with the chief justice of high court consent and not necessarily to take previous consent of president previous consent is necessary a uh, previous consent not necessarily vicharle na so this is wrong he shall have all the jurisdiction powers and what uh, privileges of judges of the supreme court yes this is incorrect vicharle that's why one and two becomes your answer simple concept kon kraliye with reference to the constitution of india पॉलिटिकल जस्टिस मीन्स अगेन सब्जेक्ट टू टॉपिक युजल टॉपिक जो नेह विचार यूपीसी आज काल पीरियड मध्य राइट अशा प्रकार सब्जेक्टिविटी वर है वॉट इज द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द फ्रीडम एंड लॉ वॉट इज द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ जस्टिस एंड ऑल राइट सो इन दैट सेंस वॉट इज मीन बाय पॉलिटिकल जस्टिस एंड यू नो दैट दिस जस्टिस वर्ड हेज बीन यूज इन प्रियम्बल वेर इट इज कॉल्ड एज जस्टिस सोशो इकोनॉमिक पॉलिटिकल तो सेंस मे अपने क्लियर पाजे कि वॉट इज मीन बाय पॉलिटिकल जस्टिस absence of arbitrary distinction between man and man in the political sphere there shall no not be any discrimination on the basis of its political stature okay so this is political justice one man one vote means equality in the right to vote under article 326 that is called as uh, political justice equal access to occupy the public office equal access there shall no be any privilege you know any privilege position or um, of, uh, like uh, you can say feudalism uh, type of sense ki jithe tumhala political office ka particular family sathi reserve kele like, this is not political justice so that means equal access to occupy the political office yes all three becomes your answer and now so that becomes 1 2 and 3 <clears throat> with the reference to the and additionally about talking about the last question uh, that was with uh, political justice you have to be again thoroughly clear about what is economic justice what is social justice kya concept clear kar political justice ha tumhala fakt ek nimitt hota question vicharaycha question cha purpose hai ki you should be clear about the concept of justice additionally what is political social and economic okay now <clears throat> Which of the following communities have been categorized as minorities by India, Indian government? And surprisingly, uh, in the Indian whole constitution, definition of minority is absent. Okay, still we have minorities. Uh, the important minority is uh, linguistic minority. Then we have religious minorities, etc., etc. That the religious minorities we have recognized certain list. Bhogo kasha kasha. Jains, yes. Sikhs, yes. Sorry. <coughs> Christians, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, and additionally Muslim. All these, okay. So all this, simple question, factual question. Why we are recognizing these religious minorities? Simple, to protect their interest, to safeguard their culture, to promote their culture. You know, uh, to encourage uh, heterogeneity, to encourage uh, you can say diversity. You know. that's why we are recognizing these minorities for the special treatment okay now 44 <coughs> sorry yes there are certain articles ani aplyala match the following karaycha or correct matching shodaychi so apan adi bagu ki article 74 cha kay the conduct of business okay council of minister shall be called responsible duty of the prime minister and there shall be council of minister headed by the prime minister a tumhala he article che nav tumhala kai particular sage aplyala constitution part karachi garaj naste prelim sathi pan important important article che tumhala text nakki mait paaje tatla ha jo there shall be council of minister headed by the prime minister it is actually article 74 that's why hatha naturally pehli wrong bant article 75 the council of minister shall be called responsible to lok sabha correct article 77 duty of the prime minister no actually this is conduct of business of the government of india conduct okay that's why this match becomes wrong in article 78 this about duty of the prime ministers with respect to the president so this is also wrong which are like incorrectly match except to all are incorrectly match that is 1 3 and 4 Which of the following statements are exceptions to the principle of the single citizenship? 
you know in india we have adopted single citizenship single citizenship represents a unitary feature where the central government have authority in the in that respect of the subject called as citizenship unlikely in usa there is a the concept of double citizenship where uh, a, a particular citizen of usa is a citizen of usa as a whole and additionally he gets benefits as a citizenship of a particular state it is absolute federalism in india we have single citizenship the justification for uh, adopting the principle of single citizenship is to maintain the integrity homogeneity and our emotional feeling of unity as a nation as a complete nation as a single nation and all we are equal irrespective of the geographical states political states we are residing in that's how single citizenship is an important feature of indian constitution in terms of unity integrity and sovereignty of the constitution and territory of the india right Let's see Kitana Kai which I said. The parliamentary parliament under Article 16 can prescribe residence within a state. Yes, single citizenship set applicable exceptions at though. You know? So as it is unitary, but there are exceptions. The exceptions could look good. And you know that while reading those, you get to um, uh, come across those exceptions also. That will list Babu. Parliament under Article 16 prescribed residence within the state. 16 is about the opportunities or equality in terms of the public employment and education. And in that sense, there is one exception. Yes, the residence can be a criteria for a discrimination, official discrimination. Residence can be a criteria. So, yes, exception I. A state may offer concession in the fees for the education to its residents as it does not violate Article 15. Barabar? The right of the outsiders to enter, reside, and settle in the tribal areas is restricted. Okay, this is exceptions to Article 19. Okay, 19 and 15. So, hey, single citizens, uh, citizenship is actually a restriction, and that's how the answer becomes 1, 2, and 3. I hope okay. Okay, now <clears throat> the term union. Uniform Civil Code mentioned in the Directive Principle of State Policies refers. So nowadays there is a lot of debate going on about Uniform Civil Code, whether the government will adopt it or not. What are the practical hurdles in the implementation or enacting this Uniform Civil Code and etc. etc. Because it is very sensitive to the, the to sensitive to the secular fabric of Indian polity. As you know, this Uniform Civil Code is uh, a, a concerned topic about uh, or related to the secular fabric, <coughs> secularism principle. How? Because in India we have diversity of religions, okay, and each religion governs its particular personal laws in its own fashion. Where the Islam where, uh, has a, a particular set of personal laws. And by the way, what is personal laws? Personal laws actually are the laws which uh, regulate the uh, topics like your marriage your family, your maintenance, succession, inheritance, etc, etc. These are personal laws, right? The laws which are dealing with these, these matters. And each and every religion has its own personal laws. And we, uh, under our constitution itself, have recognized the right to have the separate personal laws of each religion as a secular nation. Now, the concept of uniform civil code is like, why not to have a, a same or a common uh, code or common law which will govern all the personal laws of all religions in equal manner. This is uniform civil code. Okay, uniform civil code. But the topic is okay, what is uniform civil code? He prelim concept. What is uniform civil code? It is the idea of uh, what uh, of uh, having a uniform code, a simple common law of all religions related to personal laws. All citizens will under the same personal laws irrespective of their political authority and status. Hmm, illogical. All citizens will be under the same personal laws irrespective of the religion. Yes, religion word is very must. All citizens will be under the same personal laws irrespective of the caste and gender. There is no concern of caste. There is no concern of gender. There is no concern of political authority and status here. So that's why answer B becomes your right answer. Question number 47, which of the following articles of the Indian constitution reveals the secular character of the Indian state? And you know, the secularism is a basic structure of the Indian constitution under Keshwan and the Bharati case, where the secular word itself was included in 1976. 
थ्रू दिस फोर्टी सेकंड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट एंड एक्ट इन द प्रियम्बल वट इज मीन बाय सेक्युलर सेक्युलर इज एक्चुअली अ ट्रीटमेंट टू द रिलीजन्स ऑल द रिलीजन्स ऑन इक्वल बेसिस देर इज देर शैल बी नो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन टू द पर्टिक्युलर रिलीजन इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट मैनर बाय द स्टेट टू द रिलीजन्स in your constitution we have several articles which deals with the secular character of the indian polity especially it, it starts from article 14 where equality is ensured article 15 where the provision is like the state shall not discriminate on the basis of religion article 16 where the state shall not discriminate uh, uh, in respect of the employment and education on the basis of religion we have uh, article uh, 6, uh, 14 15 16 this equality then article 25 to 28 these are, these are actually the religious freedoms in itself right article 44 uniform civil code article 29 and 30 these these are uh, regarding the cultural and educational rights of the minorities including religious minorities okay so what are the principles actually je ki secular character aple kade define kartat so it starts from the word preamble the first provision is preamble for secularism where the word we have is a secular with the help of the 42nd constitutional amendment act then articles 14 15 and 16 got you then article 25 to 28 29 and 30 article 44 for uniform civil code etc ओके दिसर द रिलीजियस फ्रीडम तो इधर डायरेक्ट डायरेक्ट है ये तो इक्वलिटी वाले हे रिलीजियस माइनॉरिटीज साठी आहेत माइनॉरिटीज एंड दिस इज फॉर यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड दिस ऑल डील विद द सेक्युलर कॅरेक्टर ऑफ द इंडिया राइट दे आर आस्किंग अबाउट दिस व्हिच डील विद दिस ऑब्जर्व द आयडिया आली की कुठले कुठले आहेत सो 15 16 14 29 ऑल दिस ओके next so okay uh, go to the more, uh, question number 48 question number 48 is about 1935 act we will read the first option it provided for the establishment of the central public service commission as you know central public service commission was established in uh, year 1926 with the recommendation or or as provided in the government of india act of 1919 that's why this statement becomes wrong okay <clears throat> so it should be 1919 government of india act of 1919 then it abolished the diarchy in the provinces and introduced provincial autonomy in its place right if you read the language uh, yes 1935 act abolished diarchy which was established in uh, year 1919 with the help of again the same act गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डायरेक्ट अर्थ का डायरेक्टी वॉज की सेपरेशन ऑफ देअर द सब्जेक्ट इन टू टू सेपरेट लिस्ट एंड टू सेपरेट पॉवर्स सब्जेक्ट लन सेक्शन विल बी गवर्न बाय द गवर्नर और द गवर्नर जनरल एंड दी अनदर सेट ऑफ सब्जेक्ट विल बी गवर्न बाय द मिनिस्टर्स विच वेर इलेक्टेड ऑन द पॉप्युलर मेजोरिटी बेसिस ओके दिस स्टेटमेंट इज राइट इन स्टेड ऑफ डायरेक्टी नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव एक्ट introduced provincial autonomy okay so this statement right it separated for the first time the legislature and the executive functions of the governor general council okay separated for first time kai link lagti hai ki he could have sel or uh, which act provided for that it is actually the indian councils act of 1853 1853 it's a indian councils act okay and uh, the fourth statement is like uh, it introduced the for the first time by that's why the third become wrong it introduced for the first time bicameralism and direct election in the country no actually this bicameralism and direct elections were introduced with the help of uh, government of india 1919 where the bicameral uh, bicameralism in 1919 according to 1919 uh, the earlier indian legislative council that is ilc was replaced with the two houses now as it is bicameral system the upper house was called as the council of states and the lower house was called as yeah can you recall strickle okay so bicameralism 
it was with the help of 1919 okay and not 1935 the first upper house is council of states and second was indian legislative assembly or legislative assembly okay so that's why it became bicameral council of states and legislative assembly or indian legislative or central legislative assembly okay that's why this statement again became wrong and you got to get to answer that is incorrect uh, one three and four is incorrect okay next which of the following statements about business advisory committee is correct so uh, let's see first the background of business advisory committee what is a business advisory committee business advisory committee is again a one of the parliamentary committee which decides upon the timetable and the uh, general day to day business of the house it is headed by again a speaker or in case of uh, rajya sabha it is different case headed by again the chairman and all now we'll read the statements what is given in the statements this committee considers and advises on the matters concerning the affairs of the house which do not fall within the jurisdiction of any other parliamentary committee i will read from here uh, the real question paper if you read this real question uh, the option this is actually the first option is given here is the purpose or the role of the general purpose committee not business advisory committee so this role is played by general purpose committee general purpose committee and not business advisory committee that's why this statement is wrong and uh, we'll move to second it allocates the time for the transaction of legislative and other business brought before the house by the government right okay so it it allocates the time for that business right so correct is to now you will study starts from here ki parliamentary committees kutla kutle ahet astat and what is the role of those parliamentary committees how many members are there who are, are the chairman is appointed by whom uh, or uh, so which are those parliamentary committees which are headed by the speaker itself right he tumhala prepare karaycha ha question it paran thambaycha nahi hai hecha palikadcha area explore karaycha hai tashi link baki cha parliamentary committees kutla kutle ahet tacha preparation jase ki aplyala purcha question madhe pan he bagayla milnar hai सबसेक्वेंट क्वेश्चन की अजुन दोन तीन कमिटी अपन क्वेश्चन पेपर मन टाक नेक्स्ट इज अबाउट व्हाट इज द विथ रेफरेंस टू स्टेट सॉरी विथ रेफरेंस टू द स्टेट रिओर्गनाइजेशन कमीशन ऑफ नाइनटीन फिफ्टी थ्री कन्सिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट ओके एस आर सी नाइनटीन फिफ्टी थ्री यू नो द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द हाउ this organization of the uh, state or um, the union territories in the indian union was done uh, after independence uh, when we got independence through the government of india act of 1947 Uh, the indian states were divided into four major categories that is part a part b part c and part d you have to read about that give how these categories were divided and then um, the demand for the linguistic or the reorganization on the language basis was put forth by majority of the people and then to consider that that issue uh, the government appointed the dhar commission and again the congress committee appointed jvp commission but those two commissions again rejected the idea of the linguistic reorganization of states then uh, but the demand was continuously rising uh, about the language linguistic reorganization of states and it led to the violence in the state of andhra pradesh uh, with the uh, where uh, one of the senior leader uh, right you know about it uh, uh, he succumbed to uh, his death right आणि त्यामुळे काय झालं की नाथा पुन्हा एकदा हा पूर्ण विचार करण्याची गरज पडली की इज देर ऍक्च्युली द नीड फॉर लिंग्विस्टिक रिओर्गनायझेशन अँड दॅट्स हाऊ द गव्हर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया अगेन अपॉइंटेड अनादर कमिशन दॅट इज कॉल्ड एज एस आर सी नाईन्टीन फिफ्टी थ्री विथ दी चेअरमनशिप ऑफ फजल अली कमिशन सॉरी फजल अली अँड अदर टू मेंबर्स दॅट इज पन्निकर अँड मिस्टर कुंजरू तुम्हाला हे पण बघायचं की फजल अली कमिशनचे मेंबर्स कोण होते नाव in which year this committee committee submitted the report in 1956 okay and the committee yes accepted the language as the criteria for the uh, reorganization of the states but it rejected one language one state criteria manje kay ki language basis par ho sakta reorganization 
पण एक लँग्वेज साठी एक स्टेट सेपरेट असा वासन नाही आहे एखाद्या स्टेट मध्ये भरपूर सारे लँग्वेज असू शकतात ओके पण लँग्वेज कॅन बी मेजर क्रायटेरिया प्रोवायडेड दी रिओर्गनायझेशन विल रिस्पेक्ट द युनिटी इंटिग्रिटी अँड सॉवर्निटी ऑफ इंडिया टेरिटोरियल इंटिग्रिटी and it recommended several other factors on which uh, we can consider this reorganization of states and recommended for the establishment of uh, the 16 and uh, uh, 3 union territories 16 states and 3 union territories then the government of india uh, with uh, uh, in the coming years accepted these uh, fazal ali commission's recommendations partially and uh, it went for reorganization actual reorganization of states on the language basis where Uh, the government of india created 14 states and 6 union territories okay this question is about linguistic reorganization or the uh, commission for the state reorganization and uh, with the government of india how did how the government of india did this changes with the state reorganization act of 1956 that is sra 1956 so you have to read about this state reorganization act of 1956 and 7th constitutional amendment act okay 7th constitutional amendment act it made changes in the reorganization of states tumcha preparation cha area banto ki independence cha vele kasha prakar cha organization hoto what is part a b c d and now kya don cha provisions kay okay now we'll see exactly about src 1953 it was headed by fazal ali fine on the recommendation of this commission initially indian union was made uh, made of 14 states okay on the recommendation of the commission initially indian union was made up of the 14 state it accepted the theory of one language one state no it rejected ara jar tumhala ha option confuse jala let's say ki ha tumhala option confuse jala ta apan bagu ki can we arrive at answer Yes, we can arrive at answer. Because three, three, you know, so exactly my take it accepted. No, it rejected the theory of one language, one state. That why, that's why three, three, three uh, is wrong. And you got to know one, two, one and two. That's how. And at that point, discuss it. Kill the Federal Commission actually recommended for sixteen states and three union territories, where government created fourteen states and six union territories. That's why this statement become hmm, wrong. Uh, right yeah so on the recommendation of this union was made up of 14 state but yes 16 was recommended but still ki on this recommendation that's why it's factually right but the exact number the government ne nahi ghetla tar to factually right statement hai okay nandi academy india's top coaching institution for civil services preparation join us online to get most enriching experience from best faculty with excellent notes and specially designed courses to join the batch download nandi pais academy app from google play store for more information contact 9511280465